gives me a little credibility anyway. <laughs> That's good. Very nice. Very nice. Well, b- b- before we let you go, we, we know you're you're busy, Nigel. But mm-hmm. is there is there one story that you can share to us uh, about your days with Les um, as you're training? Maybe something unique or or a, a moment. Oh my God. <laughs> This is this is an R-rated show. I hope that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is not PG. Okay. This is not the WWE. I got a couple of stories, but I, I don't think now is the, is the place for telling them. Um, to be honest with you. Uh, but no, you know, I don't have any specific stories. But I, I mean, I was thinking back earlier on today, as, as I knew I was going to call in and stuff. And just trying to, you know, cast my mind back to those days and remember, because you're such a different person when you start out in the wrestling business, you know, and we're all we're all like empty pallets, so to speak. All we know about the wrestling business is what we see on TV. I think nowadays, obviously, people probably know a little bit more from, from reading the internet and dirt sheets and stuff like that. But still, until you're in the ring, until you're taking bumps, you really don't understand, you know, the exactities and the intricacies of what's going on. So, like I said, you're, you're an empty pallet, and that means that you can be taken any different direction depending on where you start out and who starts to train you. And I will always consider myself ever so lucky to, to have started out with Les because, you know, he, he taught me about professionalism and he taught me about the art of the business. And you can hear it in his voice when he talked earlier this evening, you know, um, uh, about just uh, just the subtleties of, of drawing money, of, of, of making money, of, of doing business, you know, and, and that's something that I will always be very lucky to have, have started out with that, you know. And, and sometimes, I, you know, if I hadn't have been blessed with, you know, you know, being able to, you know, have that sort of passion and understanding the art of the business when I started out, I, I don't know how much I'd have stuck through and if I'd still be here today. So. Well, bless you, my friend. I, I, I'm so honored for you to say that, and and I, you know, and I've said it a million times, and I'll continue to say it. I'm so proud of you, and so happy for you, and I love you like a son. I really do, and I wish you all the best in the world. Thank you ever so much, and uh, many happy returns. Thank you, my friend. I, I'm going to try to have another birthday next year. Maybe, maybe I can come to Florida <laughs> and celebrate it with you, huh? <laughs> you should be down here before that, mate. Come down here before all that. All right. Okay, no. All right, thanks for calling in, Nigel. We'll have right, to have you okay. on at a separate time. Jasmine. No worries. You guys take care of yourself. Take care, All buddy. Right. God uh, bless you. All right, you too. All the best. Bye. All right, we're about to go into our overtime, but, you know, we still want to, you know, we have a couple of questions from the chat room, so for those of Did you, you who are. you set me up for this? Did you guys set me up for this? I, I have to be honest. <laughs> I, we did set you up. I, well, saw, I appreciate it. It was it was a great surprise, and I, I thank you very much. I, I, we, we have we had some things we were working on short notice, and we were trying to get you know you know Nigel was you know you know kind enough to to drop by. Um, we also reached out to uh, another one of your students, Shark Boy, um, who is on the road. He emailed me he was on the road and fighting a cold and uh you know, he didn't think he would be able to handle his Austin voice on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew he had an Austin voice till I heard on television. <laughs> yes, yes. But he definitely wanted to uh wish you the happiest of birthdays and uh and to send you a heartfelt shell yeah. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it, you guys. I really do. Thank you so much. I, that's that's terrific. That's terrific. No problem. And we, we, before we let you go, we're going to overdrive. But, okay. uh, uh, Shane, was there a question? I know there was a question from the uh, chat room. Yeah, one, have of, uh, one, of our, one of our guys, Adam Testa, um, he was curious to know about – uh, he said he saw something on somewhere on the internet about an issue between you and Mike Quackenbush, and <laughs> he was trying uh, you know, to get no issue on that. I I I met Mike one time. Uh, I have no animosity towards Mike. No, I uh, to Mike Johnson on PW Insider. I uh, he had mentioned something about uh, Chicago being the next big thing, and I said I hope not. 
uh, just being a smart ass like I am sometimes. And but I'm just not into that. You know, I'm not into kabuki theater either, but it doesn't mean that people aren't entertained by it. So I guess Mike wrote on a blog somewhere that, uh, you know, I don't know, that I didn't understand or whatever, whatever, you know. But uh, there was some something issue about my wrestling versus his wrestling, and I said, well, professional wrestling is professional wrestling. It's not mine, his, or anybody else's. There's a standardization. I mean, there's a, a foundation that never changes. And uh, so I don't have any with Mike. I was up in CZW, up in his part of the world, in Philadelphia the first of the month, and, uh, you know, uh, some of his guys work for CZW, and, and they can work. I'm just not interested in seeing a wrestler dressed like an ant. <laughs> <It's a colony. laughs> I, I just, I mean, you know, it's not that I think Mike's an axe murderer or uh, a pedophile or anything. I just... That doesn't interest me. I don't watch opera either, which doesn't mean as somebody's not entertained by it. I just don't, you know, it's not it's not my my bag. I guess you know it's, it's, it just doesn't do it for me. I have no personal issue with Mike whatsoever. What the one time I met him I was at a show at Jersey All Pro. Uh, Steamboat and I were doing a camp up there. I saw him work. He seemed like he's a good worker. Like I say, some of the guys from his crew are are, are good workers. I you know. But I, I again, uh, Halloween comes once a year for me. I don't want to see it in my wrestling shows. That's, you know, so shoot me. I don't know, you know. But that's to me, you know, real quick. When I said about the foundation, uh, an example I use all the time when I do my camps, or uh, you know, uh, next March there's going to be an Academy Awards, and some movie is going to win the best, you know, the Oscar for the best drama. Mm-hmm. Um, well, here's the deal. That movie, the foundation that made that movie so good that it got voted by the Academy uh, the best drama for the year, the foundation for that is the same foundation that the movie that won that same award in 1950 had. Now, the costuming is different. Obviously, the audio, the sound is different. The, uh, the technology, video, uh, the, the language, you know, there's different slang expressions. There's different hairstyles. But the foundation is still the foundation. And that's when I, you know, I realize there's going to be some acrobatics with the cruiserweights, and I realize costuming is important. We never had music. I'm not against that. I'm just, when the bell rings, leave all that stuff in the corner and come out and give me Steamboat and Flair. Come out and give me Race and Briscoe. Come out and give me Terry, you know, give me wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's all. <laughs> that's all I'm looking for. So that's you know that's that's how I that's how I roll is the expression. <laughs> Definitely. Now, Les, uh, we had another question. Sure. You, you, you talk about uh, you know just give me wrestling. Who is the most underrated wrestler that you've come across over your time? Oh wow, there's a few, I guess. You know, there's probably guys. That worked the Carolinas back in the '60s and '70s. That you wouldn't know the names, but they they were w- what we would call great mechanics. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they uh, they understood the psychology, the pacing, the timing, uh, and, and were able to to grasp a good match. Uh, some of them were just what you guys call jobbers. We called them uh, uh, carpenters at the time, but they, mm-hmm. that, their job was you know was to get the top guys over. But yeah. what a lot of people don't realize, that is a talent as well, right? Because you can't just go out there and, and uh, get pounded into the ground every night and still maintain uh, any type of uh, credibility. So these guys had to be talented enough to go out there and make and help build somebody else, elevate them, make them look good, but at the same time lose and yet not lose their credibility. That That's a talent within itself. So there's... A lot of guys are like that. I, you know, I see young guys now when I do training camps. I'm, I'm going to uh, Mississippi, uh, Tuscaloosa, the week after uh, the weekend of Thanksgiving. I'll be down there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday doing a camp. And uh, there's a young man who went to Harley. Uh, Harley uh, spent a couple years out there. Steve Anthony, who's a tremendous talent. He's worked for Noah. I know that he's has some dark matches with WWE. Why he's not under contract to somebody? I don't have a clue. Vordell Walker from your area is a very talented young man. Uh, Caprice Coleman. Uh, these are all guys that uh, that I think have a lot of future. And part of it, I think, you know, here again, we were talking earlier. 